Those images of 23-year-old Neera Chopra with the gold medal for the javelin throw topped off a fortnight of roller coaster emotions and India's best performance ever at the Olympic Games. We are going to continue to celebrate the seven medal winners as well as many of the other outstanding performers for a very, very long time. But on the media dialogues, let's cut through the din and the frenzy to take stock of what Tokyo 2020 means for our ambitions of being a sporting nation. How did we get to this tally? How do we build forward from here? And how has corporate India contributed? My guest has a ringside view of India's complex sporting ecosystem and is a key participant in it. Please welcome Parth Jindal, Managing Director, JSW Cement and JSW Paints. He's also founder of the Inspire Institute of Sport and JSW Sports, which have played a key role in nurturing Neera Chopra. And JSW is also one of the key sponsors of the Indian Olympic Association in its Tokyo run. Parth Jindal, thank you very much. Glad you could make time to join us and many, many congratulations for what your athletes have achieved. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Anuradha. And it's it was an amazing moment yesterday, which capped off, like you said, a very emotional and a roller coaster of an Olympics for India. But I think the outcome is, uh, you know, is, it's been very, very successful in many ways. And uh, I think for me, Neeraj's success was the icing on the cake. But this was the first time in the Olympic Games that India was competitive in many, many disciplines. Uh, that we haven't been in the past. And I think it bodes well for us as, as a country. So are the celebrations still going on? And when do, when do the celebrations stop and everybody sort of goes back to the drawing board and away from the lights, isn't it? Because that's where the, the actual uh, preparation for this kind of success happens. No, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, as a process, we at uh, the Inspire Institute of Sport and at JSW Sports, uh, we meet on Independence Day every year at the Institute, where we take stock of the performances of our athletes, whether they are our junior athletes or our senior athletes. And then we plan for the next year. This being uh, the end of an Olympic cycle, it's a time to reflect on the past five years and how it's gone for JSW Sports and for the Inspire Institute. And to look forward to Paris and with an eye at the Los Angeles Games as well. But for the athletes, I think the celebrations have just begun, especially for the medal winners. I think that our phones have been, you know, ringing off the hook with uh, endorsement requests for both Neeraj and Bajram. But you want to quickly tell us about the genesis of IIS and JSW Sport because it's what, less than 10 years that this was started? You know, I was working at a hedge fund in New York uh, for an Indian whose name is uh, Navroz Udwadia. And Navroz's best friend uh, is Mahesh Bhupati, okay. who's obviously a 12-time Grand Slam champion, etc. So it was, a, it was a huge surprise to me. I was in office in New York and... Uh, Navroz came to my desk and he said, listen, Mahesh Bhupati wants to take you out for lunch. Uh, you can imagine I was 22 years old. I was in, I was in absolute heaven that <laughs> a 12 time Grand Slam champion wants to take me out for lunch. It's at this lunch at, uh, in New York that Mahesh actually told me uh, his vision. He said that if India wants to win medals at the Olympic Games, then India needs to build an institute of eminence uh, within our country. And it needs to start working at the grassroots level. And he said, given my passion for sport, because he, he knew that I, I played squash mm. for Brown University mm. and growing up also, I was very passionate about sport. Given my family's association with sport, he said that you guys are in the infrastructure business. And if you guys can't build a world-class institute in India, then no one can. So that's where the, the seeds of JSW Sports and IIS were actually put planted. in or planted. What is the role that y'all played where Neeraj's success was concerned? Because that's the, the you know, the last uh, on the penultimate day at Tokyo 2020. And it's the historic first athletic and, you know, track and field gold. No, so, so Neeraj came to us in 2016. Uh, he had already, uh, you know, just, uh, just after he signed with us, he went on and uh, broke the under-20 world record. And that's when he became Neeraj Chopra. He became a big name. Everyone from the Athletics Federation of India to the Sports Authority of India to TOPS, everyone started taking notice of Neeraj. 
and we were in you know we played a part in making sure that neeraj got everything that he needed uh, some of the you know the afi to their credit and the government of india brought in uve horn who yeah. was you know world record holder himself as his head coach and uh, we supported neeraj with having uh, a, a full time physiotherapist with him you know 24/7 wherever he went post that uh, you know uve and uh, uve hon wanted neeraj to change some of his uh, techniques because he felt that neeraj was you know quite an unconventional javelin thrower and he needed to change his technique in order to you know really progress as a javelin thrower uh, some somewhere down the line things didn't really work out and neeraj actually had a very career threatening elbow, elbow injury. injury yes and that's when again we stepped in we uh, we got him to mumbai dr dinsho padiwala did his surgery and then we went back to the afi and to sai and to talks saying that uve horn is a phenomenal coach but it his style his technique doesn't suit neeraj and we brought in klaus uh, a, a biomechanist uh, who we we found as his coach and uh, really you know he's been with neeraj since 2019 he spent 6 months at our institute uh, rehabbing from his surgery uh, he was in in vijayanagar at the time and then he went back to the national institute of sport uh, again and then we again had to play a very big role in in, in getting neeraj up to europe before tokyo uh, because of the pandemic uh, visa yes. visas were hard to come by so we intervened uh, our delhi office intervened i i spoke to uh, kiran rijiju the myself the sports minister then yes yeah, i spoke to him myself i said sir we need to get bajrang and neeraj to their you know respective training camps mm. he was extremely supportive he called up uh, jay shankar ji and uh, external affairs got involved made sure they got their visas um and then you know we sent them yeah. so uh, you know okay. part what's interesting in this complex uh, ecosystem that is indian uh, sports uh, uh, is that the many different organizations okay so i heard adil sumariwala of afi say something similar when it comes to uh, came to the kind of training that neeraj was ma- uh, ma- managed to do last year uh, i also heard or read rather uh, the earlier coach uh, you know the, uh, owns uh, testimonial that he's not, he doesn't feel or the criticism of the indian government sporting system and what it does or doesn't do for indian athletes elite athletes especially how do you how do you make all of these different moving parts really become a cohesive whole because neeraj's success is not just the physical aspect but it's also you know being able to survive and thrive in this context isn't it no absolutely i think i think what indian sport was 5 years ago and what it is today there is a sea change and whether it's the government of india whether it's sai whether it's tops whether it's the federations there is one common word that everyone is imbibing and that's professionalism and whenever we discuss today with the government whenever we discuss with the federations everyone says that the athlete should not get impacted at all we need to all come together to give the athlete the best chance of success yes there are disagreements there are uh, things that the athlete sometimes want but the federation has a different viewpoint yes sometimes we have a different viewpoint as well so there there is conflict but earlier the conflict the brunt of the pain of that conflict would be borne by the athlete today the way the whole ecosystem is functioning is that everyone wants the athlete to prosper nobody wants the athlete to suffer so that is where we come in we have to pick up the pieces we talk to the federation federation talks to us we talk to the government government talks to us and everyone respects each other's position and each other's role and they know that we are representing the athlete they they also have a lot of experience sometimes way more experienced than so, we do so so part you're saying not... that you managed to insulate the athlete today much better than they were previously but you know the fact is that uh, that 
you know, today there is success and we are all celebrating. But if there wasn't success, there would be just the opposite. We would all be pointing fingers at each other and trying to see where, who to pin the blame on. Like I referred to the fact that Cap, uh, Coach Own uh, in June, you know, criticized the, the government end of things where uh, athlete preparation was concerned. So is this, is this ever going to go away or is this par for, co for the course here in a country like India? No, I, I think I think see that, that everyone has their acts to grind, right? Now, if I'm a uh, coach Uwe Horn and India's number one javelin prospect decides not to train with me, hmm. right? Because JSW Sports feels that he should train with another coach, AFI feels that what JSW Sports is saying is correct, and the athlete himself doesn't want to train with an Uwe Horn, right? I think. Uwe Horn will be disgruntled and it's nothing against uh, Uwe Horn. I, I give Uwe Horn a great amount of credit for bringing Neeraj to this level. But when he was coming back from his injury, the athlete said that, listen, I want to go back to my old technique. I don't want to change my technique because I got this injury. Now, so, so see, there, there's, there are always two sides of the story. Uh, all I can say is that being knowing the details and being in the system, you know, uh, it's a it's a much improved system uh, and it's getting a lot better. And uh, the results are there, you know, for all to see. I think I think if you if you look at other sports, right, we we are very deeply involved with the Shooting Federation of India as well, and we support the NRAI, we support Raninder Singh and the entire team. Now, everyone was expecting uh, medals from the shooting team, and it didn't happen. Yeah. It didn't. It 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 did not happen. Not because of the lack of professionalism and effort that the NRAI had put in. Uh, it ha didn't happen because the athletes were young. Some of them had never experienced such a high pressure tournament like the Olympics before, and you know they couldn't uh, shoot those perfect tens when it was needed the most. But 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 it's it's not that the effort was lacking. Now even in even in NRAI there is now. Finger pointing going on. Some people are blaming the coaches. Some people are blaming the athletes. Some people are saying there was infighting, and and that happens. But but uh, you know, I feel very optimistic seeing given how things are uh, with with the government today. Give me a sense of what you expect the Olympians to now, the medal winners especially, and the other performers who were outstanding. What do you expect them, how do you expect corporate India in terms of brands and marketers to react to them? Because we know that around this time now there will be a lot of endorsements. You mentioned that the phone hasn't stopped ringing for Neeraj. But will that last up to 2024 and beyond? Will these stars, uh, you know, get the kind of endorsements that your cricketers do? You know, Anuradha, it's it's a, a very good and very important question. Uh, I think a javelin thrower uh, who wins gold at the Olympics, I, I mean, I think he's going to maybe be second only to a Virat Kohli uh, in terms of his brand endorsements. That is wonderful to hear, Parth. And if that comes true, then really we as a country have <laughs> matured, I think, when it comes to our appreciation and love for sports, isn't it? No, absolutely. It means the phone is ringing off the hook. There are big brands, small brands, medium-sized brands, all wanting a piece of Neeraj because of two things, right? One, he has won a gold medal at an international event like the Olympics in a sport like Javelin, which all 205 countries participate. Yeah. yeah. And second, he's a boy from Haryana. He's so humble, so down to earth, and in many ways, so relatable. So and I yet so composed, you know, we saw the joy, but we didn't see breakdown. We saw confidence when he threw. Uh, we saw that he didn't, you know, the moment he hit that 87 plus, he did not do uh, other throws. Was that also because the German Johannes Wetter did not, uh, you know, did not go beyond the opening? Because if he had, then maybe Neeraj would have had to work a little harder and perhaps even go beyond 90 meters, isn't it? No, absolutely. I think, I think uh, Neeraj was very, very clear that he is going to peak at the Olympic Games. Mm. And the entire preparation from all of us was done in such a way that Neeraj does his best at the Games. Now, if you look at the conditions in Tokyo, they are very hot, humid. Yes. 
uh, it had rained earlier that day so when it comes to the european throwers they normally throw in much cooler environments so it, it could be a reason why jonas wetter uh, could not cross even 85 meters let alone 90 meters which he has been doing uh, in the past but uh, neeraj you know really peaked at the right time and uh, we're, we're very proud of him but in terms of the other set, other six medal medal winners uh so sakshi malik is also one of yes. our athletes who we supported yes. in rio and she won a bronze at, at rio and we saw a lot of interest for sakshi and we continue to see sakshi uh getting endorsement deals now obviously not at the same level as cricket but given neeraj given his age given his uh, physique given his look given his, his, the sport i think uh I think Neeraj will definitely go on to the 2024 because he's got the Asian Games next year. He's got the World Championships next year. He's got the Commonwealth Games again next year. So you'll keep seeing Neeraj in action in big so, tournaments. Big it's, I'm glad you mentioned these championships that will come, you know, on our route to Paris 2024. Do you think that? as a nation we will continue to track some of these champions because it's a little transactional and switch on switch off right we sort of every olympics we'll all tune in and we will all become experts overnight thanks to guys like you in the studio and then go on to expect these guys to deliver gold without having tracked their fortunes do you think we are like that only as a sporting nation no i think i think uh, anuradha the onus is on the media as well right i think you guys have a huge role to play and if cnbc and you can do a show once in a month regarding the olympic prospects for paris i think that would be a huge step uh, to give visibility uh, to our olympic athletes right the way we cover cricket the way the media the, the print and uh, tv media cover cricket uh, if we start covering uh, olympic sports and olympic disciplines uh i think you know the half the job uh, will be done and and i think again to the full credit uh, to the media things have changed uh, you know the people are covering uh, you know if, if if i look at the print media if i look at the tv there there are wonderful programs now coming about uh, non cricketing events in india so things are picking up i think this gold is really truly an inflection point for our country and i think now we will start seeing a huge amount of interest in uh, non cricketing sport look at badminton right yeah look badminton at- has sort of broken out of that and is pro- perhaps one of the most popular now after cricket isn't it absolutely so pv sindhu is a household name and yeah. she commands a huge uh, price for brand endorsements as well uh, she's she's even more than most cricketers in fact uh, other than maybe a virat kohli and a rohit sharma she's Uh, we represent Rishabh Pant, and I can tell you that Sindhu is more expensive than Pant. So, so, uh, so no, again, it, good it, to hear. These are all good, good yeah. things to hear. Part we don't want to talk about cricket on this show too much, but. what to do ipl play, starts again uh, you know it it broke because of the awful uh, second wave of covid that engulfed all our lives uh, when it resumes in the uae next month um, do you think that it is going to go off better because you know the bubble seem to be more secure in uae and uh, how do you expect delhi capitals to continue to perform they are pretty much there on second isn't it in the league standings no no first first, first? very okay. much first <laughs> uh no it, it, i think in in terms of the bubble uh, i think the fact that in within the uae you don't have to take flights i think that really uh, makes it a lot safer uh in fact uh, some of us had recommended to uh, the bcci initially that you, they should conduct the entire ipl in mumbai uh, because you know there are enough grounds and enough hotels in mumbai to maintain a bubble but but anyway what happened has happened yeah. i think i think the ipl in dubai will will go in uae will go on without any hurdles and it's a very short tournament followed by the world cup so uh, i think since it's already happened there last year at the peak of covid i think covid is also now slightly coming down with vaccinations I, i'm very hopeful of a very good uh, tournament um, in terms of delhi capitals i think yeah we are top of the table uh, right now we have very very positive news with shreya sayer coming back from injury as well so it, it, that's a very big plus so our aim is uh, to go one better than last season and and you know win the ipl 
that's that's the aim. We've never done it. Delhi's never won. And uh, we hope that 2021 is the year of Neera Chopra and Delhi Capitals. <laughs> well, we hope. We wish you all good luck on that one. We are very delighted with Neera Chopra's success and your grateful for your contribution to it at JSW Sport and IIS. One final question, and that is we know that you do reach out to other corporate uh, entities and large corporations to partner with you all through their CSR, if not their marketing budgets, isn't it, to be able to support Olympics and Olympian sports in India. Do you want to quickly tell us how that is working? No, absolutely. So I, IIS is a, a not-for-profit uh, charitable trust. And uh, we actually, con we get contributions from over 20 different corporates. Um, you know, Kotak Bank is one of our largest contributors. Bridgestone is one of our largest contributors. Indusind Bank is one of our largest contributors. And there are there are many more. Citibank, that lot of lot of contributors uh, people who didn't want to give us money has given have given us material uh, you know people have some of somebody's donated milk for the athletes somebody's given us chicken for the athletes somebody's given us eggs for the athletes somebody's given us furniture for the institute so i i went you know me and my my team and i we went to different corporates and said that one single corporate can have only that much of an impact but if corporate India comes together and supports the Inspire Institute of Sport, then we can have a much larger impact on society and a much larger impact in sport. So today we have the Inspire Institute of Sport in, in Karnataka. Yeah, we, we, we opened one more center now in Hisar in Haryana, which is a public-private partnership with the Sports Authority of India and the Haryana Agriculture University in Hisar. We've opened one high, uh, high, high altitude training center in Himachal Pradesh uh, in partnership with a couple of corporates from Himachal Pradesh. And we are now talking to Sports Authority of India to take over one of their existing centers in the Northeast in Mizoram. Uh, and we are running the swimming program in partnership with the government of Orissa uh, in Bhubaneswar. So we are, you know, slowly spreading our, our, our tentacles into different sports, into different parts of the country and taking support from JSW yes. and also other, other companies, companies so that right. collectively we can make a bigger impact. So collectively, hopefully we will make a bigger impact and manage to push that medal tally up, have many, many more world-class athletes from here and a lot more appreciation and enjoyment of the games. Parth Jindal, thank you very much for joining us. We wish you a lot thank of you. good luck and to your team as well. Stay safe, stay well. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Anuradha. And thank you very much for watching. Catch another conversation on the Media Dialogues next week.